Hey internets, so today I'd like to talk about woke puritanism and point out a really common misconception that people have about it. Also, I've got a pretty important channel announcement at the end of this video. Anyways, first off, I'll just explain what woke puritanism is. It's when you see people, usually mainstream media journos, but sometimes also a few YouTube leftist influencers, getting very unusually butthurt over just the mere existence of a conventionally attractive female character being portrayed elsewhere in the media. With the latest example in the last few months, months being this Stellar Blade fiasco, where woke journalists are throwing a massive temper tantrum over the fact that a girl who looks like this exists, and the usual suspects of center-right peanut gallery making fun of said journos for their awful takes. I'll just go over this article right here as a brief example of this type of midwittery. So just aside from the fact that it's from the Mary Sue, and so you just kind of automatically know that the IQ level of what you're about to read is going to be capped at plus one SD, and that's being charitable to be honest. The article itself reads, Stellar Blade's design isn't the problem, it's how creepy men are are being about it. First off, notice how the author immediately contradicts her own headline, whining about the sexualization despite saying the design wasn't a problem. So when the accusation of creepy is being made here, what they're really saying is men are not allowed to find attractive female characters in video games attractive unless they somehow get permission. Which is of course insane, but I'll just quickly move on to what this article actually says. And then the article proceeds to say two things that are pretty demonstrably stupid. First off, it whines that 61% of those working in the game industry are male. Well, yeah, because men and women are generally different and have different interests and different incentives in life, which will lead us to different outcomes in life. And the second immediately stupid thing it says is that it tries to argue that women are making up half the gaming community, while just kind of glossing over the obvious fact that not all games have to target exactly the same demographics. Every single piece of media doesn't need to equally appeal to every single person on the planet. This is just an obviously insane thing to say. This is kind of the basics of wokeness. Every unequal outcome is implied to be some kind of problem, even though it makes absolutely no sense for two completely different groups of people to have the same outcomes, especially when we don't actually want the same outcomes. It just kind of brings up the age-old criticism of outcome-based feminism. For example, women are a lot more likely to enjoy romance novels, and so of course the majority of romance novels are written with the target audience of female, ages 35 to 54. Do we see the wokes ever complaining about this? No because they don't actually believe in equality of outcome. Nobody actually believes in equality of outcome. They simply pretend to believe in it because it lets them do what they actually want to do, which is just shaming people that they don't like. And that's what people are missing. The actual praxis of DEI usually manifests as hatred towards whichever group is viewed to be on top of the progressive stack. Now, Woketoids generally believe that nerdy men are unfairly at the top of this stack. That, I think, is what people are missing. What people get wrong is they accuse the Wokes of holding puritanical beliefs in regards to sexuality and media as a means of shaming men, and that's only half correct. The key element missing here is that woke Puritans, in fact, are just lying to you. They do not actually hold the puritanical beliefs that they are essentially just pretending to have. They're just acting like they are against this kind of sexuality because it lets them act on their misandrous bias as a result of their DEI beliefs. And that's what I see a lot of center-right peanut gallery people getting wrong. They're correct that it's about shaming men for the most part, but there needs to be emphasis put on the fact that these people don't believe what they're saying. They're not actually against sexuality in the media at all. And I think most people kind of realize this, we just don't put enough emphasis on it. And it's pretty easy to prove this because the exact same author of the article I'm going over also can be seen praising Heartbreak High, a show known for being pretty raunchy and sexualizing underage boys. But hey, it also has representation, diversity, and it also has correct opinions, trademark. The evil, straight, white, nerdy male is not the target audience, even though the sexualization here is much worse. And yes, this is definitely much worse because Eve, the protagonist of Stellar Blade, is modeled off of a South Korean model who is 32 years old. And I'd like to think we can just kind of have a general agreement that sexualizing underage characters is worse than sexualizing a 3D character modeled off of a woman who is 32 years old. I'd like to just think that Clown World isn't that insane yet. The point is, the author of this article whining about Stasel or Blade being too attractive and sexualizing female characters obviously doesn't really believe what she's writing here on any kind of objective principles anyway. These people don't actually believe that sexuality in media is bad. Woke toids just pretend to believe this because it gives them an excuse to cry about must rate white males while playing the victim while doing so. And you can pretty easily see that by just reading the article further, saying anything that gets the approval of male conservative extremists is bound to give anyone pause, and the creator soon confirmed that one is right to be hesitant about Stellar Blade. In other words, this entire article is nothing more than just a big hamsterization to justify her dislike of the evil conservative males. 
while hiding behind this mask of complaining about over-sexualization that, again, she doesn't actually believe. If the author was actually honest, the title would just read, I hate men, especially nerdy conservative men. And then the article itself would just read, I don't like men who like things that I don't like. And it would just kind of repeat that over and over and over again. But of course the author can't actually write that, because that would be really obviously insane. So instead the author just uses intentional logical fallacies and nonsensical arguments to try and pretend like she actually has a point, and to try and pretend like she actually has some kind of principled dislike of Stellar Blade. And this is just pretty apparent if you look at leftism in general. Wokeness and leftism is pretty pro-sexuality across the board. I mean, this is the same ideology that brings us people marching half-naked in the streets while celebrating their sexuality. So of course they don't actually care that Eve from Stellar Blade is an attractive female character. They just don't like that the target audience for this character happens to be people that they don't like. And that's what I think commentators need to put greater emphasis on when we're making fun of these type of Woketoids. Woke puritanism is just covert misandry. It has absolutely nothing to do with sexuality in the end. That is just smoke and mirrors. These people don't actually care, which is proven even further by the fact that woke Puritans never address the elephant in the room, which is the fact that complaining about the existence of an attractive female character in media, they're also accidentally hating on women in real life who are conventionally attractive. An obvious example of this being Suzu JPEG, most people would consider to be, you know, a conventionally attractive female, saying that she feels like she's being erased because these woke Puritans Puritans are effectively complaining about a character that kind of looks like her. In other words, it's impossible to shame men for finding conventionally attractive women attractive without also indirectly shaming women who are conventionally attractive for being so as well. Woke Puritans never address this contradiction, because again, they don't care. They don't actually believe in the puritanical beliefs against hypersexuality that they claim to believe. It is just a pseudo-intellectual mask that they wear to hide what they really want to say. I see way too many centrists getting caught up in this discussion with them about whether or not Eve should be allowed to be conventionally attractive, when really the discussion should be centered around why do all these psychotic journos hate cis men so much? And why do these liars keep getting hired? So yeah, anyway, that is the end of the quick rant, now it's time for that channel update. So up till now, the only way to support me has pretty much just been donating to me on Ko-Fi. And while I do greatly appreciate those donations, I'm always appreciative that it always feels like a really good compliment, donations come with an obvious problem, which is that you're not immediately really getting anything out of it. It does encourage me to make more content, but the people donating to me don't get any real instant benefit. So for a while, I've been teasing the idea of channel merch. That way you can support my content and get something cool in return for doing so. And I am proud to announce that that stuff is out now. The link is in the description below, and and I'll also pin a comment with it. And I wanted to do something a bit more fun and a bit more high effort than just my logo on a shirt. That does exist and you can buy it if you want, but most of the shirts are actually representative of some kind of meme or topic I've gone over before. And yes, I know, I promised this a while ago, I procrastinated on it quite a bit, but it's out now. I did the thing, as promised. It's cool, we chill. Birch is finally out. And it's actually pretty good. I did my research and found that Printify was the best you can get in terms of high quality and fair price. I personally designed all of these myself using Blender mostly, which also has the added benefit of me being able to render them in very high <laughs> resolution and DPI, so print quality is quite good. There's a general mixture of fun memes, libertarian hype, some philosophical encouragement thrown in there, and there's also some just general fun thrown in there. You can change the colors for most of them too. So yeah, now you can support my content in a way that gets you a pretty sweet t-shirt too. Another thing I'm doing is I've decided to set up an actual subscribe star, so that way the people who want to support me monthly can actually get something out of it via some exclusive posts and memes and such. I'll also be posting behind the scenes look at how I make my videos, which means you'll also be the first people to know what exactly I'm working on next. Thanks a lot for your support because it does in fact help quite a lot. Because of the type of content I make, I don't really make as much as generally other channels that have over 50k subscribers. I'm on the bottom of the AdSense pool and it's really hard for me to find any kind of sponsors, especially since there's a lot of sponsors out there that want me to shill a product that is, we'll just say, not up to my standards. I refuse to shill a product unless I actually like it, which hurts my earning potential, but oh well. But anyway, I'll have links up for both the subscribe star and for the merch store for those who are interested. Thanks a lot for your support. But beyond that, that is now the end of the video. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, feel free to like, subscribe, or leave a comment for the algorithm. You can support my channel through either Ko-Fi or Subscribestar, or buying some sweet merch. Till next time.